Panthers tight end Hayden Hurst is limited in what he's doing in the team's practices after an overnight admission from his family. His father revealed Hurst has been diagnosed with post-traumatic amnesia. Hurst says it happened when he suffered a concussion in the Panthers' November 9th game against the Chicago Bears. But what is post-traumatic amnesia and how harmful is it to the human brain? Queen City News anchor Morgan Francis here with an explanation from medical experts. Morgan? Well, Brian... You, if you've ever heard someone say that the synapses are really firing, that means that they feel that they're focused. Well, post-traumatic amnesia is when that isn't happening, and the brain basically stops recording memories. It results in memory loss, and in Hayden Hurst's case, that lasted several hours. In a post to X, formerly known as Twitter, Panthers tight end Hayden Hurst shared he suffered a nasty concussion against the Bears several weeks ago and doesn't remember anything four hours after the game. Queen City News confirmed he suffered what's known as post-traumatic amnesia. The connection between the different axons and neurons just aren't behaving in the way they're supposed to because they've been disrupted uh, and, and they're almost stunned and, and just not able to do their, their normal job. Dr. Chris Miles, sports medicine specialist at Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist, says no two concussions are the same. And post-traumatic amnesia isn't even an indicator of the seriousness of a concussion. In fact, 10 to 30 percent of people who experience a concussion will have some form of amnesia following the brain injury. Interestingly, there's there's what we call retrograde amnesia, which is forgetting things that happened before the accident. And anterograde amnesia are, is forgetting things that happen after. Hurst said he's hoping to play the last few weeks of the season and was back on the field this week wearing the newly mandated guardian cap. Basically, it just absorbs impact at the point of contact. That hard shell helmet is good at preventing skull fractures. That's what it was designed to do. And so just having that soft exterior is just a better way to mitigate the forces. Last year, the NFL mandated all linemen, tight ends, and linebackers wear guardian caps in practices up until the second preseason game. The players wearing them saw concussions during that time period drop in half, causing more than 200 players to continue wearing them. The NFL has since extended their mandate to all practices and for more players in contact positions. Before the NFL jumped on board, Carolina colleges led the charge. Guardian caps were first on the field in 2012. Basically started at the high school level. Um, and then 2013, Clemson and South Carolina were um, our two first colleges to use them. The players who have concussions, like Hurst, have to go through what's called a return-to-play protocol. Dr. Miles says when managed appropriately, concussions should prevent someone from going back into their sport. However, multiple concussions could result in long-term damage and may be a reason a player steps away from the game, as we saw with former Panthers linebacker Luke Keekley. Annie, Morgan.